All right, Jason Rona back here in the J Concepts garage for a brand new vlog episode. Here again with Fred Reap. And uh, Fred, we wanted to, we're getting into 2020, but we wanted to rewind just a little bit, uh, touch on a couple of events we hit at the end of 19. Uh, we didn't want to forget the Monster Truck Hall of Fame, plus our first ever uh, Monster Mega Tour in uh, Maryland. Yeah, Jeff Cook, you know, always a first class act when you go up there for the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, just incredible on, you know, how many people now. I mean, the event every year, it seems like more and more people are starting to attend. It's really making its name in the monster truck industry, and uh, it's it's going to be great. I can't wait till the uh, 10th anniversary of it next year, well, this year now, Yeah, 2020. Yeah, I mean, what was really kind of unique this year is they took a little bit of an opportunity to not only have the new inductees, but then a lot of the the original inductees were happened to be at that event, including Fred Schaefer and right. uh, with barefoot fame. And then uh, they had one of a uh, special surprise for everybody. They had restored uh, the barefoot racer of uh, Scott Hess. Yeah, Fred Schaefer, one of the members of the you know the first batch of inductees into the Hall of Fame rolling in with that truck it was it was really cool the fans loved it yeah i mean it was uh done really well they've been kind of working on it there in that general area for for quite a while now but you know it was nice that um they kind of kept it away from everybody you couldn't um have any idea what was going on and then uh you know when the timing was right they rolled that thing right into the uh the museum there yeah every year the, you know more and more trucks show up it's getting harder and harder to hide these things i mean there's such a big project a lot of work goes into them you know, they, those guys, they want to keep it a surprise. So, you know, it's, it's really difficult, but they did a really great job with Barefoot. One of the things, obviously, we were doing there is, uh, you know, you've been working with Jeff Cook, Matt Stoll, some other guys to organize and, and run sort of a demonstration RC uh, event there at the Hall of Fame. It gives something for people coming in and the spectators to check out uh, early on in the program. And uh, what was it like this year kind of, you know, setting things up and getting it rolling there with, with the crew? Yeah, it's just another form of entertainment. I mean, the, the first night there, you know, they kind of open it up. The general public's allowed to attend. So they put up, you know, the little mini monster show, kind of something like we do at the Monster Jam World Finals. You know, get these things in front of the crowd. And, you know, the kids and the families, you know, they come in and they really get pumped up about it. You know, this, the guys, you know, you're in there competing and you guys are wanting to win too. I mean, yeah. it's just, we're putting on a show, but you guys get pretty competitive back there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to do any of these things and not want to do well or win. Um, you know, I went out in the first round right away. You know, they matched us up. They had some great races and uh, went down, uh, thought it was going good and, and just fell off the hill. Yeah, and, uh, number that one was qualifier over. goes out in the first round. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people just, uh, you go out right away. So um, that's how it goes. And uh, that's what makes this so difficult. But, you know, we were able to ask the guys to do a little grudge match there in the end. And I got to run the winner, which was nice. Uh, it was nice enough that he uh, allowed me to do that. But, um, you know, we had some great racing there. And, uh, you know, the guys really put on a good show and uh, did a little freestyle, too. Yeah, Travis Sutton taking the win there. And uh, you know, it was nice enough to take you on in a, a grudge match. And yeah. uh, it was pretty good. Fans actually liked that. Yeah, I think, um, obviously, just the more that you can keep running the trucks, everybody likes it. Right. And you can get out there and, and uh, you know, they don't want it to ever be over with. Yeah. So, uh, you know, kind of getting through the Hall of Fame there. Uh, we got back. And something we we had on the schedule for uh, quite a while was the Monster Mega Tour. Yeah, which uh, we uh, you guys drove up uh, the crew. We went up to uh, Mimi's there at the track, mm -hmm. and uh, tell us about kind of uh, you guys making the trip up and, and setting up for that event. Yeah, anytime, and I you know throw out to all these guys that put on the events. You know, it's a lot of work doing these things. You know, we have a lot of our plate here. You know, designing such trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the things that we got going on here. It's a very big undertaking for anybody, you know, hold, hosting these events. We really didn't know what we were getting into up there. We kind of had an idea, but things changed last minute, so it was kind of scramble mode to make it happen. But uh, I think it was a pretty big success. Yeah, I mean, we got a really good turnout. We're really happy with, and thanks for the guys that did come out from surrounding areas. We had people coming from all around. You know, obviously we had some Michigan guys, New York, yeah. Virginia, uh, you know, Washington. I mean, we had guys coming from everywhere and. In the end, we, we had a really stacked field and a lot of trucks there. Yeah, a lot of trucks, a stacked field, a bit different. We had the monster truck side-by-side -side racing, and then we went over to the off-road track and did some uh, you know, monster truck racing on the track, single passes with the uh, Stage 4s, and we did some UTV racing, heads up, and uh, that was pretty cool. 
Kyle DeFalco stepping up, you know, from the RC mm-hmm. Monster Truck Challenge series. Mm-hmm. He came down and, you know, that dude, he's got the software and uh, he can help make an event happen. It was awesome. Yeah, it was nice. He had monitor set up so you could see, you know, kind of live right. where your qualifying were being plugged in at. And, um, you know, obviously you guys calling it off. And we're running kind of a unique uh, course there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in the area that we, we had, we, we made something um, and, and you, you know, I know everyone comes up to you. So how does this work, Fred? You know, yeah. like you start, you like start on red, finish on red, start on blue, finish on blue. And it's like, it's a little bit uh, daunting if you've never done it before um, to kind of start and, and get going and, and just know, you just kind of keep running until you're done. Right. Yeah. It was a Chicago style racing. It's been done for many, many years. It was a uh, event actually, you know, created, they named it Chicago style it's for the smaller, uh, uh, venues to where you know instead of just doing a burp of the throttle and there the race is done you actually go around and get around the infield of the uh, arena mm-hmm. so it gave a little bit more track time and a lot more show for the fans in the monster truck world so taking it down to rc scale that's not necessarily the event i wanted to put on there for chicago style it's very difficult to time it's very difficult to watch the competitors you probably actually need people that are professional judges just to judge that thing mm-hmm. things happen really fast and also it's such a short track i mean the tracks are going around blistering speed and uh but it was really cool it mm-hmm. all turned out in the end yeah and then the other thing that was interesting about you know the reason why we went to that location or part of the reason was we also utilized the off-road track yeah the off-road track was really cool you know you see sometimes in older videos of monster trucks you know some single line passes down an off-road type uh, track for time mm-hmm. trials we figured we'd give that a run uh i kind of called it the uh, boondocks mm-hmm. for the uh mega trucks they kind of run on a mile long type track up there in uh northwest georgia so uh, we kind of gave that a try and uh it was pretty good those mega trucks were really getting around the track with some pretty good speed yeah i mean the the thing that really stood out to me right away was i saw either russ or sunny or, or matt uh, run their a mega truck out there and all of a sudden i was like wow like these things go around really well yeah and and right away i was like all right I'm, i gotta get out there and try this and the mega trucks which we were pretty much using axial smt 10s with right. the mega truck tires yeah and they really handle the track well yeah you think you know a real narrow racing cane type style or the fling king would be really wickery or real tricky to get around the track but those things are really hooking up yeah i mean we simplified the layout so we could do kind of what we were doing where we did the qualifying and then we ran a uh, all at once in some of the races but mm-hmm. um it was a little bit of a unique format and we, that's what we wanted to do we wanted to go there and kind of showcase what could be done with the monster trucks right. what could be done on this uh you know the boondock style the off cross we were calling it what could be done there and just kind of generating some interest levels of different things you can do with these trucks yeah i mean the you can do pretty much anything you know mm-hmm. the big tires you know you go out there you bash you go out some have some fun you can run you know an off-road track you can mm-hmm. run side by side you can do anything you want yeah you know, you know on the the off cross or the boondock style track you know we obviously we had mega truck out there we had the tough truck we did the stage fours yeah. uh so we had a, a pretty nice little assortment of different classes and the utvs we did too yeah the utvs were really fun you know people in the crowd you know they were liking it since it is kind of an it is an off-road facility you mm-hmm. know, the off that's something the off-road guys are really getting in behind and you know you never know that could be another class redeveloping in the future to you know fit in with a uh you know short course truck yeah I, you know to me the one that was really fun for me too was the tough truck basically we took a traxxas stampede we put our rangers tires on it you could change the body and you know do a little hopping up if you wanted but um the truck really works well on the off-road track um kind of outfitted that way yeah it was really cool uh, you know a two-wheel drive platform and yeah it was still hooking up on that clay and it's you know inexpensive those those uh, stampedes which you can get in many different configurations right. from traxxas from the stampedes to the craniacs and mm-hmm. uh, the bigfoot trucks and they're all uh, practically the same stampede but um, you can use any of those and, and run like a tough truck. Yeah, it's a, a terrific entry-level platform. If you want to get interested in this, you're not dropping the big bucks on some of these rides. Mm-hmm. You can get in with that and have just as much fun. Kind of going back to the, the race itself and the monster truck side of things, uh, you know, we kind of quietly also debuted some new things there. We had so much going on uh, before and during, yeah. but we 
we wanted to bring some new things to the event also and one of them here is we have this new 93 Ford body which is um, not released yet but we brought this to the event and right. you know this is something we wanted to make for the race trucks mm -hmm. uh, we already had it for the 10 and a half inch wheelbase and now we got it here for the 13 inch uh, anywhere from 12 and a half to 13 inch wheelbase right. and um, you know when we equipped it with a visor and the racer back because uh, you know that's how they were using them back yeah, then. Yeah you gotta have it. So you know kind of getting this body out there you know I put that on my on my cube truck but I was really happy with the way this paint turned out you know uh, dark side was the one that painted it but you know we got some custom decals and stuff on this thing to mm -hmm. make it look like the legit uh, truck from the 90s but um, a lot of interest I think in this body uh, for the race guys. Yeah the race guys you know we're in that kind of realm now we kind of have a have to the new norm of a retro size body and then these race truck bodies which is fine mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's, uh, it's really cool we're starting to fill in those gaps now for the uh, race trucks and the guys are loving it yeah and you know you can see obviously we got two trucks here side by side we got mm -hmm. uh the the truck i ran in the stage two class the it's a kind of primarily a clod buster type truck uh, that stock wheelbase, right. and then we got the more of the racing style a pro mod or the sport mod truck, which is a little longer wheelbase and kind of requires a different uh, size scale body. Yeah, different size, different scale. You know, just you got to make the body fit the truck. You know, some of them kind of look a little goofy with the shorter wheelbase on it, but uh, yeah, they, you make them work and they look good. So the other thing we brought, and you know, we had a nice field of the uh, uh, stage two trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know my uh, Bigfoot 4 truck here but we also brought a whole new uh, chassis set up on one of the other trucks I was driving first time we ever drove it right. we got it together brought it to the event and uh, we're calling this the regulator chassis setup mm -hmm. uh, for the Claude Buster here and, and uh, you were working on this uh, quite a bit before we got out yeah, it was kind of on my plate when uh, right before the event, we were kind of putting the event a little bit on the back burner, trying to uh, thrash out this uh, brand new chassis setup and the steering system that we have in it. But uh, I think it turned out great. Uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds in my eyes because now in some of these retros and monster trucks, it's real hard to access the uh, the controls, you know, your speed control, your receiver, the battery. This one here, I kind of wanted to lay it out in more of a touring car type fashion, but yet still maintain the, the right ge geometry that the truck needs. You know, keeping everything real super low, the weight in the center line of the motors where it really needs to be, and have the uh, accessibility in, in to get to everything. Yeah, I mean, one thing we're going to have here is that, you know, we got the chassis plates. Um, when we're going to have the machined, the parts that are white here, which are 3D right. printed, are going to be machined aluminum parts. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to be, you know, really nice finish, uh, really durable, uh, high quality parts. And then down below where we're mounting the electrical yeah. as another plate. But then we have a actual cradle uh, that bolts the whole chassis together. And we have a space there, which mm -hmm. we're going to be able to put... Uh, you know, depending on your rules or how much how you want the truck to handle, right. a, a nice weight in there, right? Yeah, I mean, just looking at the truck here, you don't even know that there's something really magical going on under that cradle. So mm -hmm. it's really cool. Yeah, it's a drop-in weight. You know, up to a pound of uh, weight can be added. You know, just dropping it in into this chassis with no real exterior modifications at all, and that's really awesome. And you know, you're just keeping that center of gravity as low as possible and make the thing handle. Yeah, and you know, and another part of this is since we're talking about the stage two trucks and more along the, the retro lines, is that's how we wanted the chassis to appear. Is you know, we wanted it to have that stage two straight rail frame look. Right. There's differences with the clawed uh, ladder bar, so we had to. Um, kind of incorporate them into the design but um, but that's the idea of that look going back to you know the 80s right, right. yeah I kind of wanted to stay true to the uh, the form of the Claude Buster mm -hmm. you know that's the popular vehicle for that class I wanted to stay and use as much of the stock parts on the axles and the suspension as possible I feel that's what a retro should be and then to build off of that you know the nice uh, chassis a layout in a manner to where you can access you know you have the accessibility to it and actually something that's tunable you can put the oil filled shocks on it and really make this thing handle and work well yeah i mean and then kind of going back a little further in the year uh, we were running at the bigfoot open house yeah it's another event there where um, i was in the first race with a uh, tad goad in the retro class and uh, you know we right away we had to race each other i made a mistake drove my truck into one of the uh the uh, blocks that they had for the um, using a car battery uh, right. so um, 
and you know we had the all the steering and all the linkage on the front side of the the transmission uh, on my truck and you know I hit that little piece and you know bent up all everything and you know kind of damaged the body and and I was like you know what I'm over this steering being on the front and right. uh, I was telling you afterwards I'm like all right we got to figure out a way to get all this stuff uh, flipped around on the truck and uh, get this thing so we can either use uh, just front steering only or front and rear but either way let's put all the stuff on the inside so we're not hitting all this stuff and and doing all this damage and uh, um, it took a bit but we got that incorporated into the truck right yeah I was a little apprehensive at first it's like you know where are we actually tucking the servo and a lot going on in such a small small space but yeah I had to go back to some old you know again this is a hobby and mm -hmm. you know a lot of my skills developed you know as a kid and mm -hmm doing this as a hobby so i had to use some of the old school hobby techniques to try and uh, mock up and design a, a prototype piece and then take that piece out and then model and dimension off of that part and with success we created a, a servo to actually tuck back in there you know real streamlined real trick easy to bolt up and uh I th I, i'm excited to have the uh, manufactured piece yeah i think that was been a, a great uh, addition you know one of the reasons for the success i had at our monster mega tour was because of the steering setup yeah. i think it worked really well on that track um it worked well we were at the hall of fame too but mm -hmm. got eliminated in round one but yeah, it, it, it was a great because we got out there and doing these events allows you to actually test these things mm -hmm. in competition and you know it's one thing to go outside and do a couple jumps and a couple turns but it's a whole nother thing to somebody sets up a track you don't really quite know what it's going to be like and right. then you have to drive it and say all right is this is this going to cut it is this going to work in competition is it durable enough and and that's kind of where we are right now is now we're in the production phase of getting these items out mm -hmm. and you know we're got, gonna call it the you know the regulator chassis set and then we're going to have the the steering they're, they're kind of going to be two separate sets depending mm -hmm. on what the customer wants right and one thing you're all about super clean look yeah. so now looking at this thing you know there's nothing really it's, it's super clean yeah it's nice yeah so i mean that was a big accomplishment uh getting there to the monster mega tour we really mm -hmm. again appreciate everybody coming out to the event and um you know we got plans to do um the number two next number year two. <laughs> and uh, we've already talked to mimi mm -hmm. and uh you know kind of expressed um some things we'd like to do there in the future just to kind of um, get some more space, uh, have a little bit different access. And uh, now that she's seen it and now that everybody's seen it, they they love those trucks there. And yeah. uh, I think she, everybody was blown away. Uh, I think we had, what, 150 trucks or something like that in there. Right, yeah. Um, and uh, it was a great, a great turnout. So I think now that everyone's kind of got their feet wet a little bit, um, you know, the facility, mm -hmm. Mimi, us, and uh, we're going to be able to uh, kind of set up a, another one uh, that – it's going to be even better than the first. Yeah, probably more of a purpose built this time. You know, now everybody kind of knows what's going on with it. But uh, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I mean, obviously the advantage of having the dirt track, we could do, you know, the boondock style off cross. And mm -hmm. then obviously the monster truck stuff was was the whole goal. And, uh, and we got her done. So kind of finishing up, you know, 19, moving into 20. Um, what are you foreseeing down the road here and some things that, you know, we're kind of looking at attending, you know, coming up again this year. I know things happen fast. You know, we're already in January and we're, we're, we're rocking and rolling, but things come up quick. Yeah. I mean, kind of shaking here in my boots is like, we're already almost through January again. We're not, we just got started. So yeah, things are going to go by fast. There's a lot of stuff going in the background as always that, you know, even makes the time pass even quicker. Uh, a shout out to the Patrick family, Dan Patrick, Chris Patrick, everybody behind the scenes there. They extended the invitation again. So now the uh, Unchained event will be back for a second year at mm -hmm. the Dan Patrick Open House. Super excited about that. Yeah, I mean, that's a great news. I mean, that's just another opportunity. Uh, I think kind of the theme in all of 19 was how many times we race these things in front of other people spectators and people right it's really important that's something when back in the day when i was doing events we kind of had venues to where we were in parking lots or grass fields or something that was near the general public walking around and that kind of generated a lot of interest for these things and you know for manufacturers and things like that you got to get in front of the public you know people aren't going to know about your product unless the public sees it so we have to have that some kind of form to where people can come up look at it touch it feel it 
you know, see what these bodies, see that they're really super cool and see that it's something they can get involved with. Yeah, I think between the Monster Jam World Finals last year, Bigfoot yes. Open House, the Patrick event, the RC Fest. I mm-hmm. mean, we had four or five really nice events where that were directly in front of the people. Yeah, Digger's Dungeon, another big one. Mm-hmm. Memorial Day weekend is, you know, thousands of people passing to vacation up there in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And people can stop in, see these things raise, get an autograph with Dennis Anderson. He's always around, you know. It's, these are really important venues for this type of hobby, even the hobby as a whole, because people that have gone in monster trucks have also graduated into off-road racing mm-hmm. that you've been accustomed to yeah. for all these years. Yeah, they, they definitely cross over. Anytime, I, like when we were at Mimi's, I mean, um, a lot of off-road racers came in and, and um, you know, they pulled up a chair and it was there. They were there almost as long as we were. And it got to the point where I was racing so many trucks, I was like, hey, uh, hey, you work on this, you know, yeah. put these tires on it and, and do this because you use everybody that's around that they can, yeah. can wrench. And our off-road buddies came in. They lend us a great helping hand getting stuff uh, rolling. But, um, yeah, the, the four or five events we did in front of people and then kind of rolling into 2020, uh, we got, a, um, you know, one of, I think one of the first events that usually comes up on the calendar is in March there. Uh, Matt Stoltz and those guys run the the Monster Cross, right? Yeah, Monster Cross is going to be happening again. This is going to be the third year for those guys. Look to have a really spectacular event. Everybody that has attended that event has had a great time. You know, you think it's tough running, you know, single lane passes with these things. Try running them for four or five minutes side by side, bumping tires together. Yeah, and I think they already started promoting that event online. Uh, there's information on how to get signed up and mm-hmm. to get going to it. Uh, they kind of did a little condensed version in terms of classes and rules, which I thought was nice. Um, let people kind of know um, what to run. And, uh, you know, that was one thing we worked on also was kind of simplifying stage one, two, three, and four. Right. And, uh, you know, kind of laying it out there so people understand a little more about these trucks. Yeah, come out with a kind of a standardized format. It's something I've always wanted to see over the years. And finally, hopefully having the opportunity and other organizations watching, trying to what we do can kind of standardize these things and make it easier for people to recognize. So that's a stage two, that's a stage three, so on and so forth. And, you know, kind of in that tone, you know, um, a lot of people ask us, hey, when do you know when the Axial SMT-10 is coming back out? Right. They just relaunched that truck, mm-hmm. which is big for our segment here because it's a great starter build truck, right? Yeah, great starter build truck. Uh, you know, you want the look of a real tight monster truck with a tubular chassis, you know, kind of the scale type look that we're looking for. You know, we're running them and racing them and they're a proven platform. Yeah. And uh, utilize some of our stuff on it and you have a winning machine. Yeah, I mean, you got... Um, you know, like, you know, so the trucks that are kind of out there to, to look for is like the Clawbuster, Buster, mm-hmm. the Axial SMT-10. These things are starter, basically starter trucks, depending yeah. on what class you want to run. And right. then from there, you can modify them off into many different directions. Right. The Stampede, you know, many, di- uh, a couple of different things that you can do with that thing. The Slash 4x4, you know, we've dev- done the conversion for that thing. That's, you know, a spectacular piece when you get to racing that. And, uh, you know, there's many different things you can do with that. The monster trucks, the uh, UTVs, you know, you can make it a mega truck. So a lot of things you could do with just one machine. So, you know, we move off of Monster Cross, which is going to happen around March. Mm-hmm. We get into the next series of events. You know, we... Um, before you know that monster jam world finals will be rolling around and then uh, the solid showdown yeah 2020 monster jam world finals it's coming to orlando again uh you know bari and the crew there always do a great job you know having this track all set up uh you know they build a scale type looking course to what they run in the stadium it's really fun you've had great success out there with uh, your trucks and uh yeah look for that and then back to back it's going to be uh the solid actual showdown which will be going on up in Virginia. Yeah, I mean, both events we were able to hit last year, and uh, it was just great to be at both of them. I mean, I think Solid Axle Showdown uh, was the biggest monster truck race that had happened um, as far as, you know, as many trucks at that one event at right. that time, and 300 and something or whatever yeah. it was there was just packed. And um, obviously, and then the World Finals, uh, great competition in a organized fashion. And uh, every time I drive by the stadium over there, I, the dirt still Take piled up. Still the the dirt still piled up there. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready for them to kind of smooth this out and get our track going again for next year. Yeah, Marlon and Raphael Cox, those guys, they got it going on. They've been doing it for several years now, so they kind of know how it's going. And, you know, again, a program that's been building over, you know, year and year and year. It's just their entries are going up. 
people really take an interest. They have a really good pro, uh, program going, so mm-hmm. it's going to be great for them. And then, you know, we kind of move, uh, you know, into some of the other events. Uh, you know, obviously up there, uh, the RC Monster Truck Challenge World Final Guys. Yeah, that's with... later on in the year. I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll be getting and talking about uh, the Falco brothers again. But, yep. you know, those guys got it going on. You know, uh, Kyle DeFalco, he's already signed on for the next year with Mimi and the uh, and our monster truck event up there in Maryland mm-hmm. so it's going to be another good you know organized event yeah so take a look online I mean what we've done is we have a J concepts events packet things yeah. that were that we uh, either do the event directly or something that we're the exclusive sponsor of we have a packet that has all those events right and then we'll come out with a monster truck uh, schedule of things that we'll be at throughout the year as well so look for that on facebook and on our blog and, and that type of yeah, thing and always check back for events dates because i know some dates are tentative you know some things are still being planned out through the year we kind of have them locked in on where we think they're going to be so always check back to reconfirm on event dates because sometimes they do change a little bit good all right fred well anything else you want to uh tell everybody to look out for in 2020 or we just uh, rocking and rolling and, and see the best we can do here. yeah look out for this guy at the monster jam world finals here in orlando he took it home last year he's gun- gunning for it again i'm sure he'll be piloting grave digger to another victory but we'll see yeah we'll see i'll be in the pits working on it yep all right guys well thanks for joining us here again on the vlog and uh obviously if there's anything any questions comments throw them down there below uh we check them out and uh obviously if you like what you see subscribe to the channel Uh, Hit that bell and uh, make sure you're notified when a new video comes up. And uh, we'll see you next time. And thanks again for joining us. Yeah, see you next time.